What is up, party people? You guys know I always show love to those companies who help make this podcast possible. This one is not a sponsor, but you guys know is a very, very good friend of the show. It's going to be my friend, Mr. Ben Poole over at HVAC Tactical. Known for many things, putting out awesome content, being an amazing dude, and just trying to better the trades in every aspect that he possibly can. As well as the award ceremony, which is Absolutely amazing time. It is a bunch of amazing influencers and just people in the trains getting together, having an amazing night and doing things that normal trades people don't get to do, you know, walk the red carpet and all that kind of stuff. And as you know, I won HVAC podcast of the year. So it's an amazing time and it's awesome. But what I want to let you guys know right here, I'm going to show you is Ben has some of the best merchandise in the game. So if you guys are looking to, you know, support some people in the trade, HVAC Tactical was one of them to do it. I have almost every piece of clothing that Ben offers. So if you're looking to buy a shirt, support it. You may see a lot of people wearing it. Some of the influencers online, well, anybody can wear it. It's great to wear these kind of clothes rather than buying some Nike shirt or some other brand. Let's support a brand of people we know that do the same things that we do. All right. So go to HVACTactical.com. Check out what he has to offer. I mean, it is shirts, hats, you name it. It is absolutely amazing. And if you look on HVAC podcast real fast, oh man, who's this guy? I know him. There's a list of podcasts that he recommends. So go check out my friend Ben over at HVAC Tactical. Next, you guys know who it is, my friends over at Blue On. So guys, Monday night, if you were not paying attention, they gave away like $2,000, okay? So every Monday, if you are using the Blue On app, if you're in there getting all the resources, the manuals, the tech support, all that kind of stuff, and you're making orders through Blue On, even if you go pick it up or they deliver it to you, If you're using Blue On Delivery and having it shipped to you or dropped off to you like it's a fucking sub, you can do that as well. Every time you make a purchase, you get entered into this. So you're already gaining points that you can recoup as money. Okay, so you're spending your boss's money. You're buying the stuff that you need from the supply house that you were going to shop at anyway. You're saving yourself time. You're accruing points. You're getting money back for what you had to get anyway, and it's not costing your boss any more money. Then you get entered into this drawing, okay? The more things you do, the more times you get entered in, and they're giving $250 per person a week. So that's going to be the technician and the counter guy who sold it, all right, who went through and processed your order. They gave away almost $2,000. I want to say it was 10 entries. So yeah, $2,000 they gave away, and they're doing that every Monday throughout the summer. So guys, get your money. Blue On is upgrading the HVAC industry. Be part of this movement, okay? Because it's only going to keep getting better. I promise you. I wish I could tell you everything that I know about what Blue On is doing, but I can't. Be a part of the movement because it's coming whether you want it to or not. All right? Guys, awesome show for you tonight. Let's rock out this pledge and get on with this show. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States. And thank you to all those men and women who defend it. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Welcome to the number one rated HVAC podcast. If you're looking to grow in the HVAC industry, then you're in the right spot. Blue-collar people talking about blue-collar shit. Let's get better together. So turn up the volume, buckle your seatbelt, and let's welcome your host, Gil KV Jr. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I am your host, Gil KV Jr. Here we are, another hump day, another Wednesday night, and another amazing show for you guys. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. Let's just say hi to some people real fast. There's a lot of you in here. I have so many moderators. I feel like they're the only ones that watch me. Rookie, what is up, brother? I didn't see you last week, man. I was going to call you, make sure you're all right. Miss Jennifer Manzo. Hello, Chica. How are you? Mr. Outlaw HVAC, Mr. East Coast. Mr. Blogger, what is up, homie? 
Hey, Mr. Brian Sanders, what is up, my man? Everything HVACR, what is up, my man? I don't think I missed anybody. If I did, I apologize. I will come back and get you through later on. Mr. Jason Johnson, yes. What is up, my man? I wouldn't forget you, buddy. I wouldn't forget you. And happy belated anniversary, buddy. But yeah, guys, I have an awesome guest for you tonight. And I think that it ties in really good because when Jamie was on here last week, what are some of the things we talked about? That he was a guy who made the transition from being just a technician to starting his own company and what he was trying to build and how hard it is. And we need to know that there are resources out there for us. Granted, with some recent things online, some of them out there aren't so good, and I'll make that another post. I'm not going to tie that into this, but there's a shit bag out there coaching people. That's a whole nother story. But I have a really, really good one for you guys tonight. I can't wait to have this conversation, and I want to make sure that I introduce him properly. So, guys, I'm going to read this real fast because I want you to understand what he does, and he is really, really good at some things. So I want to read this to you guys because I don't want to miss a thing that wouldn't be fair to him. So Mr. Jeremy McCliver is a professional speaker, certified EOS implementer and EOS coach, owner and coach at Disruptor Group with a serial entrepreneur who helps leaders master the art of business. Jeremy has owned and led multiple companies through high growth phases. Under his leadership, organizations have won best places to work, double in size year after year, created strong cultures, that drew top talent to the door, created federally registered apprenticeship programs for youth getting into the trades, all while increasing the bottom line profit for the company. Their insights with the teams helps teams reignite the passion that founded them and guides them through the process of building a stable and long-lasting organization. Jeremy Above serves the state of Arizona Advisory Board for Construction Education, Wesmic Schools Advisory Board and Chairs and State Welding Advisory Board and Helps with Skills USA. So guys, with that kind of introduction, without further ado, help me welcome Mr. Jeremy. Joe, thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course, man. I'll be Jeremy, (laughs) however you say that. (laughs) I'll be good with that one, man. (laughs) It's funny. I said, Jeremy, there's a kid that my older son plays baseball with, and that's how they say it. I always think it's weird, and I make fun of it. For some reason, I started saying, I'm like, it's Jeremy. I know how to use Finex, like Jeremy. So anyway, man, thank you so much for coming on. I'm really glad that we got you know linked up. I mean, I was really excited to be able to talk to you because a lot of the things that you're doing are things that I 100% believe in, like we've talked about off air, about helping the next generation in the trades in general, as well as the kind of culture where people want to work and it's not that old you know, my way or the highway where guys just don't get taken care of, they're not paid properly, et cetera. So I guess before we get too far, let everybody know who you are and a little bit about you, my friend. Yeah, I'll just share a short bio about me that's a little different than that one. First of all, I was a uh, straight A student, graduated as a junior from high school and skipped the whole college route which is not what any of my teachers thought I was going to do. Like, ah, and I had a really interesting experience. I was, uh, you know, believed in the trades, had a dad that supported the trades. I knew that's where I wanted to go. I was actually running business through the school system. I had classes, I was making money in them and wheeling and dealing. And that's the route I knew I was going. And I had a lot of teachers pull me aside because I was excelling really well in school. And they'd say, Jeremy, you're going to waste your life. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not going to go to college? Like, no, I'm not going to college. <laughs> I made my first hire at 19 and ended up building multiple collision centers. We grew a whole bunch of stuff, built a bunch. Of, and, and throughout, I've had a successful career, but I skipped the college route because that wasn't me. I knew that. I wanted to be right in the trades. So um, when it really comes down to e- even my kids right now, like I'm pushing the, the trades are believer where it's at. I actually believe and surprised we haven't seen it yet that there's going to be a, a turning point that we're going to need trades more than we need doctors. Law school. We don't need another lawyer. We need someone to fix the toilet. <laughs> we need yeah, someone to fix yeah. the air conditioning. I mean, I'm in Arizona, man. Air conditioning is super important. 
you're right. We had that problem where, especially now, we're in that shortage, like you said, because the older generation, as we know, was retiring off faster than new kids were coming in because this wasn't the flashy job. So I agree with you. This is definitely where it's at. And you can make damn good money. Trust me, I know a lot of people in this chat who do very well for themselves. They're not hurting for anything. And, you know, you said the West Mex school system and stuff. The reason I highlight some of those things, my involvement there is a give back because I get frustrated with the way that it's viewed that they send all of the handicap or low performer kids to the trade section of the school system. And all of these smart kids are like, no, you want to talk about education and science and chemistry and mathematics. It's in the trades. That's where it's all at. <laughs> yeah. I never thought until years of using the trade, you know, when I start looking at like the makeup of refrigerant or just different things and you're like, oh man, that's chemistry. Like, oh, I never thought that I would use what I learned here and here. I go to a lot of local schools around here and talk to people. I go to the Votex and try to talk as much as I possibly can, supply house nights, etc. And I try to tell them like, hey, I don't ever want to tell a kid not to go to college, but- don't think that if you don't go to college, like you're letting somebody down or you're doing something wrong. I always tell them like, hey, if you loved school and you liked learning and you excelled, then by all means, go to college for a hard skill. Don't go for a, you know, I got a business management degree. Okay, well, what fucking business are you going to manage? You know, like get a hard skill. But hey, if school wasn't good for you, like, you know, say you loved history but you got a D in it, okay, then school's not for you. Maybe try to go to trade school, don't get a bunch of college debt, and you can make money to take care of yourself and feed your family now. Absolutely, totally agree. I mean, I see and work with ridiculously successful people, usually hiring the college degrees. And I'm not anti-college. I do believe if you're going to be a doctor, you better go. If that's what you want to do, but that's a hard skill. A degree in German polka music is not going to get you far or something else like that. So. It's so funny you say that because I had a kid that I hired years ago that actually did that. So it's so funny that you said that. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy drunk- ones. I'm like, how okay. are you going to use that? <laughs> yeah, he's not going to make it in the trades either, but that's a whole nother story. But I'd love to hear because I'll be honest with you. Like I get a lot of people, different coaches that come on here and I let them talk and say what they do. And I don't think you're one of them first and foremost, but some of these guys, I see their stuff. And I know that they bullshit a little too much. So I'm curious to just know, like, when you come in, and just so everybody knows, you know, Jeremy does, like, trades in general. It's not just HVAC. Obviously, we're talking about that because that's what we do. Like, when you go in and help these, are you helping smaller companies get big? Does it matter what size they are? Like, you know, how is it going in? And, like, what are some of the things you have to do to really build this foundation to get these people successful? Yeah, so most of the companies I work with are between a million and 10 million in revenue. Uh, so it's not the entry level. We got some that we'll work at that are below that, but they usually have to have the million dollar mindset. That's what I'm always looking for. There's a little bit of that that, quite honestly, I don't want to work through. If you don't got the go get it attitude, I'm not here to kick you in the rear or do anything like that. So I'm just going to move on. But if you got the million dollar mindset, we're going to go far with it. Where do we jump in or how do we do it? Is that what you asked there? Yeah. Obviously, I'm not telling you to give me your playbook, but say company A calls you tomorrow and says, hey, man, we're at $2 million. We haven't been able to move the needle. We want your services. What do we do? What is the kind of from there? Yeah. So a big part of where we start with is all around accountability. In fact, I say this in front of my clients and sometimes they look at me like I'm crazy uh, because they know that I'm training right when I'm telling them that. But I believe 75% of training is a waste of money and a waste of time. Hmm. Only 25% of it you ever look at is really about skill set, learning how to do something better. Most of it is an excuse for poor leadership or poor management, right? I don't want to do my job. I, I do, oh, you know, I don't want to have the tough conversation I'm going to do a training program again. Like what? So we dive into accountability right at the get go, getting really clear on what are people accountable for? Now, what do they do? This really opens it up for both sides of the conversation because it's a lot safer for a leader to tell you how to do something 
than it is to tell you what result they actually want. Yeah. Yeah. If I tell you how to do it, I'm in control. If I tell you what I want at the end, you're in control. Very true. And that's scary for leaders. They don't like doing it. If I can get them to say, no, look, I just need this, this, and this. This is the outcome. And then we're going to put some numbers on it and create some accountability and discipline around executing it. Then we actually turned it into a vibrant culture on both sides of the accountability coin where the leader is saying, this is what I need. And the tech is saying, well, this is how I can deliver it. And they're collaborating together to make more money, right? I don't believe that you need to go tell a technician every little step of the way on how to do their job. Um, When we get into process stuff, which is a little bit further into the deal, I say most of the time we can run our entire company on 20 pages or less. If I got to tell the guy, you know, there's certain steps when you go out there to the job, certain checkpoints that we need to make sure we cover, you know, you can't leave without a signature. You got to have a check or whatever the key points are. But I do not need to tell you every step. Well, if this happens, then click that. If this happens, then like, oh, okay, that's your job. Yeah, I agree. And I, I love that you said that because I know what I want our technicians to do. But I feel like, so let's just say like, hey, we need to sell more service contracts. Rather than me just sell more service contracts, sell more service contracts. It's, hey, guys, like I know we were blown away with the service contracts for a little bit. I was wondering, like, how do you guys think we can get back there? You know, like. You guys got any ideas? What are you even seeing out there? I let them get invested. They come up with the idea and yeah, that's an awesome idea, man. Let's do that. Still solved the thing that I was trying to address, but it wasn't my idea. They came up themselves and they run with it. It doesn't always have to be, you know, I'm your boss. I fucking know everything. Hear me roar. That's not a leader. And I could never lead that way. And nobody could ever lead me that way. Wow. It's not really effective when you look at it and most of that is based out of fear when i dig into it the leader has fear to hey we need x number of service contracts we can call that out and then we can come back next week and say all right so we didn't hit that what do we need to do different and they're like oh you need to change this or that or whatever and we begin to break it free but it's a collaborative thing there's some things that the leader is going to be held accountable to now because there's clarity around it Right. Yeah. The technician, everybody's held accountable to it. We all know what we're doing then. Yeah. We always tell our technicians that we want to be able to provide them challenge, clarity, and care. The three C's. Yeah. It's something that we always want to be able to do. And just like I do the monthly or quarterly things with them to be like, Hey man, I think since the last time we met, you've been a fucking rock star. You've excelled at this. I think that you could do A, B, and C, and you could get even better. And I let them do the same thing for me. How have I been, you know, as a boss to you? Is there things that I could have done better? And when we first started doing it, obviously it was like, oh, you're awesome, Gil. We love you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, man, cut the shit. You know, and they're like, hey, well, I really wish when scheduling happened, like, you know, we could do this. I'm like, all right, that's an awesome idea. I love that. They started giving me feedback and, you know, I'm like, hey, I don't ever say that I'm the best. I'm trying to get better like you guys. So you kids giving me feedback, I'm willing to take it. And it's turned out to be pretty awesome. You know, I rarely ever have to discipline or dig into somebody's ass because we've been fortunate with the culture that we've created. So they don't ever see me angry because I don't have to be. If it is, it's somebody that doesn't work for me anymore. (laughs) Yeah, but if you create the right culture where it's an open team, all talking about the results that we want. You have a poor performer. I, it's not going to be you that's going to run them out of here. It's going to be the team. I've seen it a hundred times. They police right? themselves. Get this clown out of here. <laughs> like, yeah. We're trying to do something and this guy is going to kill it for us. They don't tolerate and they know more of what's going on in the field than you do anyway. I hear things, but I, I agree. They don't tell me everything. You know, I have a few moles out there that, you know, they come back and tell me what's going on, you know, as far as to benefit the team, you know, if they hear something like, Hey, this isn't healthy, man. I just want to let you know this was said, Hey, I appreciate it, man. I'll, I'll look into it. And then like you were saying, like, even when it comes to pay and different things, like I don't believe in all commissions. Cause I feel like I know guys can make money, but I feel like it promotes dishonesty. 
So I feel like the guys should make a good dollar per hour. That's their security. They've earned it. They're good at what they do. And then the commission stuff is just added on top for doing their job. So they have that ability to really take their income to the next level. We always tell them every week, we give you a blank check. If you decide at the end of the week that all you wanted to do was 40 hours base, that's fine. That's your choice. But just know that you could have doubled that or you could have got yourself an extra five, 600 bucks or, or whatever it is. It always goes back on them. And a lot of times they're like, hey, man, like I feel like I missed a few opportunities last week. I just wanted to apologize. I'm like, hey, you ain't got to apologize to me, man. I'm like your wife might be mad, but you ain't got to apologize to me. I'm like, just keep doing what you're doing. And it's amazing when they have that freedom to know that, hey, I'm help keeping the installers busy because I was able to offer that high-end system that went through and it wasn't like, oh, if I don't sell this, I'm not going to get paid. You know what I mean? It was just about doing a good job. It's awesome. But I'm curious to you, say you go into that $2 million company and you see the culture is shit. How do you guys help build something like that? In your mind, Like, how do you tackle that? Yeah. So after accountability, after we get that clear there, and so we have some guardrails that we're implementing that and having some of those conversations we're going to jump into the leadership side of it and really say, okay, how are we going to build this culture? So we use core values and I've heard core values a bazillion times in the different industries. Most of the time when I see core values are these like foo-foo things that are warm and fuzzies on the wall that actually mean nothing. So I try to get past all of that and really say, okay, what are the three to five things that we got to do all the time? Like behaviors, Right. And so we get really raw with them and we put a lot of accountability around how are we going to lead with these, drive with them. And so we'll get them like one team had a no cans policy, right? That was their core value. Like we figure it out. This is a company that figures out, don't ever give me a can't. And that mantra all the time. Another one had a, uh, you know, they were just a group of guys that were super hard charging. 65 hour, 70 hour a week was just going to be the way it was going to be, Right. So they had fire in your belly is what they called the core value, right? So it's way different than like integrity, quality, all this stuff. You know, this would be a hard working core value, but they had a fire in your belly. You know, once we got it implemented in there, in the interview process, they'd be like, hey, Gil, this was a great interview. I'd love to have you on the team. But before you come to our team, you need to know something about us. Everyone here has a fire in their belly. And if you don't have one, because we're going to be hard charging 65 hours, 70 hours a week, it's go, go, go all the time. And you didn't know if you don't have a fire in your belly, this whole place is going to know in about two weeks because you're going to be walking funny because my foot's going to be up here. You get the point? <laughs> and with that, they would have like half their interviews wouldn't follow through, but they didn't care about that. It was the half that did follow through. Showed yeah, up on like finally found my place. Yeah, they have to fit your method. Just like we say, every customer is not ours. You know, it's okay to fire the customer. Ryan, my buddy, who was the owner of Beltway, is very big on the Myers-Briggs. So we have everybody do that because certain personality types, you know, they do good at certain things and certain ones mesh together. Our core values, well, it's not core values, we have something called an MVP statement. It means something to us, so I won't say it on air. I never have. But, well, one of them, it's something along the lines that, you know, everybody drops the ball. It doesn't matter who drops the ball and who picks it up. Like, this is we. We're a team here. And um, it's written a little bit different, but it's been awesome. And that's why I was, I was curious to ask that question because, like, you can have amazing culture. No culture is the same, you know? Because it's made up of those people, the energy of the owner and the team. And it's not some like, oh, if you want good culture, you do this, this, and this, you know? So that, that's why I was curious about it because I feel like we didn't get lucky because we planned to do this. We failed at some things, but we learned some things and it worked. I feel like some people confuse good culture with not really knowing what's going on in their business, you know? I know for a fact, I would bet my paycheck that you could go to any of our people tomorrow at a gas station and say, hey, I'll give you $5 more an hour to come work for me. And they would tell you to go fuck yourself. You know, I feel 100% confident, but I know some people don't, you know, they go to work at places and they don't feel that way, you know? 
And so your MVP, and I don't know all of that, but what I hear you describing, I love that, you know, some of them are just to take them off to a mantra or a whatever. I don't care what you want to call them, right? I'm not stuck on the word core values, but you can see where we're beginning to build. Like these are our three or five. This is our creed. I've seen it be, this is our whatever. That's cool. But you, you live that then. And everything's like that. And I'll fire you if you're not it. Part you're, of the job to make sure we uphold that. Yes, you have to. You know, we pledge allegiance here. I love that when we're getting into the show. There are certain standards that that requires, right? Or whatever that is. And that's what we're really creating with this core values statement, right? But the words like integrity, quality, trust, you know, I'm like, okay, like, but what's different here? Yeah, you're supposed to have those. That's not a plus. That's like showing up to work. <laughs> hard working. Yeah. Now that team had a different version of hard working that was way intense. They needed to communicate it. And that was a part of their way of being. That's cool. I was good with that. Not quality, integrity, honesty, and hard working and team player. Like, right. <laughs> How many times have you heard those? So once we get that clear, we can begin implementing that into the way that we're behaving. That makes perfect sense. When you find these companies that are struggling to grow or get bigger, what are some of the things that you feel like they need to learn or implement? Is it setting bigger goals? Is it the X's and O's? Like people say, like, you have to know your numbers. You can't grow if you don't know. And you got to see them every day. I know that's kind of a generalized question and you do a whole bunch of different avenues. But I guess if you had to think of some of the biggest roadblocks that you have to help people get over, what would you say? Yeah. So, you know, the statistical answer is communication, right? And I only say it kind of like that because it really is actually the issue. Very, very often in the course of business, they're just not communicating with their employees. They're just not communicating with their team. Usually they have big visions, big dreams of what they could do. But then when they go to action, they're communicating to their techs in this like little small micro, like go to Home Depot, go to Home Depot. Like (laughs) let's fix the root problem here, man. And they're not really actually diving into running a business and communicating about their vision. So I would say that it's really that communication back to their employees. And you said it earlier, they want to be smart. Like forget being smart. Let's make a business. And if it's your idea, not my idea, so much better. Yeah, it's good. Nathan, you wait till the end of the podcast. I'll 100% stand up. They were asking if we, either one of us are wearing pants. They get a little crazy in the yeah. I, I can stand up too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I find that it's, geez, that thing got me off. I agree with the communication, you know, is you can have a vision, you know, vision cast is easy, but if you can't put that vision into motion and sell it to your team and get them to know how they're going to help meet those goals. It's kind of, it's never going to happen. It's going to be unattainable. I guess I'll ask you this. What is the biggest growth that you've been able to see somebody go from, you know, like one to 20, 10 to whatever. The biggest one that I've seen one to 10 is my most common, but you know, I had a a company that went from about 14 million that's where they started at with me and we unlocked some stuff, got it broke free, got the culture strong. And they went from 14 to hundred, they're at about 120 now. Once they started getting this repeatable, they got control of the business side of it. And then they started just M and a merger acquisition, plugging and playing, fixing and building. Once it started going, it went absolutely insane. Most of them, you know, I'm usually seeing, you know, 25 to 30% growth year over year on most of the companies I'm working with. That's a typical that we're shooting for. You'll see the 50 to 100 percenters, but really at 100% growth year over year, you're usually breaking something. Yeah, for sure. I see a lot of companies that train for the sake of training. Like, oh, we're always training. We're always training. Okay, that's great learning new things, but are you implementing things? You know, are you taking what you learn and implementing into your business? I was the same way. I'd go to these different shows and come back all pumped. You're like, man, I learned all this stuff. And it's like, okay, well, when are we going to do it here? Like, what's the point of learning it if I'm not going to put it to use, you know? That's why I say 75% of training is a waste. 
It's either poor leadership, we don't execute, like it's just train for train, white, all of that kind of stuff, not execute. And we work on taking it and then making sure it actually gets out there. And, and a big part of that, often when people set a goal, they don't think about what's it actually going to look like. Like, oh, I want this. Or I go train. Oh, I want to learn this. Okay, what is going to happen when you learn this? Are you going to sell more? Are you going to be more efficient? And once you start asking those questions, you cut a lot of training out. Yeah. Sometimes I like a lot of the training. Like we do a whole team meeting every week and then just service. And then I do individual stuff with the service guys. And some of it, it's not like we're giving like, oh my God, we wouldn't be able to make it without these meetings. It's getting together, having breakfast. Yes, we learn about something, the communication, the service guys, it's the same thing. We're eating breakfast. They're building the relationship. We're talking about different points, hearing everybody, hey, you know, do you have any issues uh, last week or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I bring them in individually because I know they open up a little bit more like, you know, hey, I ran into this and we go over some technical stuff. And it's more about them knowing that I give a shit you know, then whatever it is. But then it's also, I think growth has helped with putting systems and processes in place that are repeatable. I feel like some people make things so hard. Like one thing, not having like all of your prices in the price book. When a guy has to call and be like, hey, I found this, how much should I charge? Okay, well, it's like, well, how many times has a person called you asking for that? Oh, they call like every couple of weeks. Well, put it in the fucking price book. Like they should be able to go out there and do their job and not have to call you to ask for a price on something. You know, that should be rare. I've been there. I came from that. You know, you'd hold it to the vest. And if God forbid, I teach them how I price things. Okay, this is what we paid for. This is how long it's going to take you to do it. Uh, you times it by this. You know what I mean? Like they know how to do it. And I give them the freedom to, hey, if you think you need to offer a little bit of a discount on this to make the customer happy, if they're going through hard times, do it. They don't have to call and be like, hey, Mrs. Smith's going through a bad time. Her husband left her and, you know, just take care of the customer. So being able to give them that leeway. And I'm not sitting here trying to like, oh my God, we're perfect because that's far from it. We had where we grew like 240% over one year and we pulled the brakes back because to be honest, I got afraid that we were going to blow the roof off. So we were like, hey, let's dial this back. Let's keep shoring up this foundation. And I think it was a really good decision. So I've got lucky with Ryan, the owner. Ryan is amazing at seeing three to six months down the road and putting a plan together. I'm that person like, hey, give me that plan and I'll make that fucking plan happen. You know, I'm a doer. You know, not that I don't have visions and stuff like that, but I'm a get shit done person, you know? So that's where me and him, our personalities work very well together. And it also helps when you have an amazing team around you. But what is one of the hardest industries that you've had to work in out of all the trades? Hardest industry trade. So I mainly focus on the trades and kind of, kind of skirt the answer for a second with one that comes to my mind that wasn't the trades. Cause sometimes the trades will send me all their professional service clients too. And because I'm working on the operations of business, I can work in that in their own. When I got into that white collar corporate environment, I was get me out of this stuff. Like so when you said the worst that couldn't get past that to think about what's the hardest trade that I've had to deal with. That was just like mind numbing, like all the little politics and semantics and no one would just say, Hey, you're an idiot. Why'd you do that? I can understand that. I don't understand yep. all these back doors and all these weird things, but is that what you're asking more? The industry What's the hardest one. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that uh, probably the structural steel industry has been the hardest one simply because they have everything has got to be like pre-measured. Like it's they can't build on site. They can't do anything on site. It's all got to be off site and it's shipped and it's heavy and it gets there. And if it's three sixteenths of an inch off. It's seven thousand pounds on a crane later to fix yeah. it's frustrating as all get out um, for everybody and it takes so much prep to get there and then as far as cash flow from a business standpoint it's the worst cash flow model you'll ever see like I bet and we have you know our supply chains in the other industries you know HVAC plumbing electrical it's hard you call to get things now and it's oh I can have that you know it's two months well 
what the hell? Well, I know Steele's got to be bad because that is the political side. And, you know, oh, they're fighting a war over here. So now we can't get as much of this. My father-in-law owned an import-export company. So he made a fortune during the war, but he would ship steel and do different things. And I, I learned some stuff from him. Thank God they invented a crate to ship drone planes, which was pretty awesome for the government. But I remember him telling me things about steel that some people like, you know, he would have something and people would literally be bidding on it because nobody... Nobody could get it during the war. It was like, hey, I need what you have. And he's like, okay, well, so does 70 other people, you know? Yeah, um, yeah and that's the other thing is it's a commodity too. So it's traded on the stock. And so it's fluctuating on you while you're buying and you bid and then it's moving on you. So it's really kind of crazy how complex that industry can get. Yeah. They all got their challenges though. Every one of them's got their own unique challenges to it. How long have you guys been around and how big is the team at Disruptor? Yeah, so six years we've been around. Uh, we got four coaches on the team so that we can constantly stay in contact. Uh, we created, like we were talking a little bit offline, a virtual. It's based off of Facebook. It's owned by a Facebook parent company, but it's not Facebook so that we're in control and somebody says one of those politically incorrect words on it. <laughs> we're not canned, right? So we got a community in there where they can all bounce ideas off of, and then we do, you know, retreats and all kinds of cool stuff with them. The trade is kind of, the industry is irrelevant. So do you guys like prefer one? Like, oh man, like we've been able to help really a lot of these, or it really doesn't matter as long as you get the opportunity to help somebody. We like the trades period, just because I believe that that's where it's really at. But we are really focusing on the home service trades. There's a little bit of the recurring, you can get the consistent customers or your customer database. And there's just a lot in that area that we we focus in on. But it's more just because we like it, not because we can get any better results than anywhere else. It's just that that's what we like. Well, that's cool. It's what's going to make you guys good at it. Yeah. You know, the fact that you do it because it's what you like to do and so a lot of the trainers that I've met that have been really good over the years that I've learned a lot from, you know, they love what they do and they just happen to get paid to do it. Those are the ones that are awesome. The ones that are out there that are telling you how good they are and, you know, I'm the best at this. Those are the guys that normally aren't worth their fucking yeah. weight, you know, their shit bags. And I was very excited to be able to meet you because I feel like so many people out here now say that they're trainers, like they were a tech and they sold a couple of dollars and now they're training people. And some people are so desperate, you know, to succeed that they're willing to, oh, this guy's not as expensive as that guy. I'll go with him. And I hate seeing people get fed bullshit and then thinking that all training is bad because it's not. Because I really think that, you know, none of us know everything. And I tell people, you could have been the best tech in the world. Doesn't mean you're going to be a good business owner. It's two different skill sets. It's a different trade. Exactly. So sometimes you need to have somebody come in and give you a foundation, a blueprint of what you have to do. You're still going to have to work your ass off. You still have to do it. They can't do it for you, but it's nice to have a little bit of help. It's just knowing that you're guided in the right direction. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Where are you guys based out of? Where are you located? Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, we're based out of. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just Arizona. I didn't even think about that. Right where HVAC is definitely a big deal, <laughs> especially right now. <laughs> yeah, people say like, oh, it's hot out, but it's, you know, what do they say? Oh, it's dry heat. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, well, stick your head in your oven and tell me if it's fucking hot. It's hot in about half of Phoenix. The other half is the indoors where it's actually freezing cold because in my office today, one of the electricians had a jacket on. Because the air conditioner's turned down, you know? <laughs> so it's the irony of it. You go in and it's like cold and then it's hot. Because it's 100 and I don't know what it is today. It's 105 probably. And then it's 72, which isn't cold. But it feels cold when you're walking into 105 to 72. But it's good you guys don't have the humidity part to deal with. They have down south and, you know, out west. Because that's what really, really gets to be... The problem is the humidity part. You can have it 72 degrees, but you still feel sticky because we're not doing the whole humidity stuff. But Maryland has been horrible for weather. We're starting to get hot now. Like We only have three months. That three months kind of 
means if you end the year in the green or the red, you got to do the rest of the stuff in the year, but it's very important. Man, I talked to family in Texas and they're like, oh, it's 110 today. I'm like, yeah, I wish it was 110 for one week. I'd be busy for six months, you know, <laughs> but yeah. I do what you got to do. I hate when people bitch about like, you know, can't find good people or, you know, can't make money because it's not hot here. Like, yeah, those things suck. You know, one thing I've always taught is overcome and adapt when it comes to adversity. And we've been able to take people off the street that know nothing about HVAC. They're just good people. I always say you can't teach somebody to not be a shitbag. If they have good morals and values, I can teach them how to do HVAC. And some of these young guys have worked out amazing. And I'm so happy for them. They're good kids and they're making more than their parents do. You know what I mean? They're making a hundred plus thousand dollars a year. It's awesome to see that, to know that there's always a fix to every problem. You just got to think outside the box. Don't get stuck in that. Like you said, I can't, I can't, we can't do this or that poor me kind of attitude because it's not going to fucking get you anywhere. Yeah. Usually when I hear the, it's hard to sell right now or the, you can't find good help. I usually ask, you know, how many people do you need or how much are you trying to sell? And they'll say, you know, I'm trying to sell 500,000 or I need three techs. I'm like, all right, do you think in your area there are three good techs that would move? The answer is always yes, right? Yeah. Like, so what are you doing to create an environment where those three techs would leave wherever they're at and come to here? That's what you need to be doing to get in control of this. You'll be fine. Yeah, or have the culture where the people who do come, they're never going to leave. You know, most people don't always leave for money, they leave for opportunity. And we want them to know that the best opportunity that they have to succeed is right where they are. You know, people so, quit their managers, not their job. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I always tell the team that I always want to be the manager that I never had. Yeah, there's sometimes if I'm sitting in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner, but I know a tech is on call and had to go out. If they call me, I'm getting up and I'm answering, you know, and my wife knows that, you know, I'm not going to leave them. I remember doing stuff and calling my boss and he wouldn't answer. And I felt alone out there. Like, I don't know what to do here. I'm never, ever going to do that to somebody here. It doesn't mean that I don't fuck up and make mistakes. And sometimes they don't leave being like, man, what the fuck is Gil talking about? But they know that I have their back. And that's one thing that really means the world to me. And I think if more people out there, you know, thought about it like that, that things could be really, really different and understand how important the trades are. Like this world couldn't function without us. You know, don't just say, oh, I just do plumbing. Oh, I'm just an HVAC tech. I say like, yeah, I'm an HVAC tech. You know what I mean? I make as much as some doctors, you know, because I always make this joke. I say, you know, a doctor, if he goes in to do surgery and the AC's out, guess what? Your surgery's canceled. That lawyer, you know, the judge supposed to have court that day. There's no AC. Guess what? That shit's postponed. You know what I mean? We were talking earlier. That's why I love, you know, doing this podcast, getting the word, helping people, talking about different things and the women coming into our trade, you know, dealing with men's mental health. Like that's a real thing. We see that every day. Like it's okay. And then also like being proud of what we do in this job. Like it's not just... This is my career, my passion. If it's just a job for you, it's because you made it that way. You know what I mean? I didn't mean to go on some tangent there, sorry. Oh, no, that's good. It's, it's real good. I think of a, a joke. It's a plumber. So this lawyer, bathroom backs up, toilet's flooding over. It's a Sunday morning. He's panicked. He's calling everybody. Can't get somebody out. Can't get somebody out to fix this thing. Finally gets this plumber guy to come out. Plumber's out there for about three minutes unclogs it says that'll be 250 bucks and he goes 250 bucks you were here three minutes because i don't make that as a lawyer and the, the plumber looks at him and goes i didn't make that as a lawyer when i was one too hey like, <laughs> quit it go where is it you know yeah it's a legit profession i get it but you were a lawyer you were doing that I, you paid me to come out on a sunday morning yeah, you're paying for my expertise, you know? I just left my family to come here to come to you, and this is how much my time is worth, and the fact that I know I'm good enough at my trade that I was able to know, hey, this is the problem within a minute and have it fixed already. So if I would have sat here with my finger in my ass for two hours, would that make you feel better about paying me 250 bucks, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I feel like it happens all the time in the trade when people are like, oh man, that's too much. Based on what? 
How many HVAC systems have you sold? Like, w- based on what? You know, your cousin's brother's uncle's neighbor got one cheaper? Like, okay, we can all go buy a nice steak from the grocery store and cook it ourselves. Okay, then why do they have steakhouses? It's crazy. I love those people. I'm like, hey, is, is it fair that, you know, our techs get to go to training? Like, we keep them up to date trained and go out of state and stuff like that so that they can be really good for you? Like, yeah. Is it cool that they have, you know, a 401k and they get paid well and them and their families get to have health insurance paid for by the company? Well, yeah, yeah, they should definitely have that. Okay. Should I take away their vacation time that I give them? No. And I'll name off all these things. Well, I'm just wondering what I could take away from them to make it cheaper for you. And people are like, oh, okay, I'm the asshole here, you know? And sometimes you just say different things, you know, or if they give you the whole, well, you're charging 10, but this guy's charging eight. It's like, oh, well, I wonder what he's not doing to make it that cheap. You know what I mean? I love those price objectors. When I get that price objection one or when we coach it too, because I'm not the cheapest. They're like, oh, well, so-and-so is this amount and you're a lot more. My number one go-to is, what do you think the difference is? And they answer it, man, every time. They eat it up. Like, oh, it's this, 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 this. And pretty soon they keep talking like, uh, do you want a book? Like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> no, I'm not backing down on my price. Yeah, you know, we didn't show up in the white van with a magnet on the side of it, you know, wearing a cutoff T-shirt, <laughs> looking like a sack of shit. Yeah. But it's crazy. But we're at an hour, man. I feel like there's so much I wanted to talk with you about, and I really didn't get into a lot of it. I don't want to keep you all night, but I want to thank you so much for coming on, Jeremy. I'm I'm very happy to see another coaching place out there, people trying to do things right and, you know, worried about culture and some of those foundational things. And I love when you said that, you know, even though you're a trainer, that only 25% of it, you know, really matters. Like, that's really cool for you to say that you're a trainer. You know what I mean? So for you to say that is just provides a lot of truth and, you know, being genuine. So I really think that's awesome. How can everybody find you if they need your services or interested? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah. So if they just want to go to disruptorgroup.com and they can get a hold of us through that. That's easier than just give them an email. I can give you my email out there too. It's Jeremy at Disruptor Group and shoot me an email or go there. We'd love to have a chat. Yeah, that's awesome. And and guys, obviously, that will be in the show notes when the audio podcast comes out. And then I will also get it updated. So it'll be in this after this is out and watch the video podcast as well. So thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. I would love to hear your insights and different things. You know, even learning a few things and being on the same page is pretty cool. It makes you feel like I'm, you know, doing some things right if that's what's being taught, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I love that MVP thing that you had. That's what I'm always pushing for in that arena is just to get this. This is our mantra, our code, our rules, our core values, whatever you want to call them, but this is our way and we're going to live by it, die by it, fire by it, hire by it. Like this is who we are and there's no if ands, buts about it. So love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and I appreciate it. If something changes or if you guys ever want to come back on, man, please hit me up, email. I'd love to have you back on sometime. Cool. Man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having us on. Yep. Thank you, buddy. I'm going to go and close this out. Well, thank you, everyone. You guys are funny as hell in the chat with the Crocs and different things. You guys are funny. You definitely did get me tripped up. And I am wearing pants. Ooh. But, you know, hey, if you want me to get it kicked off and stand up and drop trail, you guys must not have met me before because I don't give a fuck. But thank you guys in the chat, man. I appreciate you guys for coming in here and being here every week and watching it, man. I really, really do. And I saw Mr. Adrian came in. What's up, my man? And something that he said is very true, that Ben, HVAC Tactical, his magazine came out. Guys, buy that magazine, get it. It is absolutely amazing what he's doing with that magazine. I may or may not be in it. I'm not sure. Check it out, dude. It's an awesome magazine. And Ben put a shit ton of work into that magazine. So that is for you guys. It's for us. So go get a copy of that and check it out. That's just the beginning for that. If you guys have any questions here before I close things out, I just stood up, rookie. Fucking dick. I think you can get his magazine at HVACTactical.com. So if you go back to his... Here, I'll do it for you real fast before I close the show out. So if you... Magazine. 
So if you guys go and click up in the corner, I'm pretty sure that you can... Maybe I'll look into that because I'm not seeing a link, but I'm pretty sure that you can get it from right here on his website. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, where's my thousand bucks? Damn it. So, thank you guys so much. I appreciate this, man. And I'm going to make this comment. I don't know if some of you are in the Facebook group, but there's a coaching guy out there now that I'm not going to say his name, even though I want to, because I don't want to get sued for defamation. But this guy was a piece of shit taking advantage of some of the women that he was training. And I want to let all the women know who support me that, first of all, all of you don't support this guy. I hope his fucking company crashes and tanks because that's unacceptable. Second of all, to all the women in this industry, 99% of us, we are here to support you, the women coming into the trade, all the work you guys put in, and we don't put up or stand for shit like that. If you don't want to know what I'm talking about, you don't need to know. Don't worry about it. If you do, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's more of the business Facebook groups that you'll see what I'm talking about, but it's something that just really makes my fucking blood boil when I saw what happened to some very, very fucking amazing people, to a guy that was supposed to be a good dude. I knew from personal experience that he wasn't, but to know that other people got mixed up and got hurt, it fucking pisses me off. So anyway... Guys, I love you. I'm going to close this show out, man. I appreciate your guys' support. You know that. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Obviously, I keep meaning to get some more videos out. You know, share it. Get people, more subscribers, watch the videos. Go back and watch them. After the fact, the watch hours, get those up. That would be great. If not, no big deal, man. I know you guys are busy in the trade and you give me enough of your time every Wednesday or listen to the podcast. So I don't always want to take any more of it. <laughs> rookie he's funny but yeah make sure that you like the podcast on all the social media sites you're following me that wherever you listen to the audio podcast if you could download it and subscribe to it and to be honest just the download like download and subscribing to it really helps because that automatic download even if you come watch it live those analytics and those numbers help me to be able to get new sponsors to keep this thing going to be able to get free stuff to give away to you guys you know, so all that helps. So yeah, you guys know the roundabout. I won't keep saying that. I'm probably going to wait till after summer to do it. Just a lot of things going on, but I am going to start doing the live streams on Saturday nights and I'm going to start trying to do it at eight o'clock and then I'm going to do my show, my live stream, not a podcast, just bullshit and talking with you guys, taking callers. And I'm going to go right up until the misfits. And then we'll go right into their show. So it'll be two hours of shenanigans and good times. So I definitely want to do that, but I'm not going to start it for a little bit, just so everybody knows. All right, guys, remember, be safe out there. We all have somebody to make it home to, man. Keep your head on the swivel when you're driving. Make sure that breaker's turned off. I don't care who told you it was. Just be careful, all right? Do the little things, man. Set yourself apart from the next guy or girl. All right. If you're not going to do something and give it 100%, then God damn it, don't do it. Be the best at what you do. Have pride in what you do. Like Mr. Ben Poole says, master your craft. You know, do it really good and then get a little bit better. Do it really good and then get a little bit better. Keep getting better. All right. Guys, until next week, man, stay safe out there. Like people said, stay hydrated. I hope you guys, where you are, the weather's hot, you're booming, you're making money and doing what you have to do. Be smart with that summer money. Don't be blowing it on dumb stuff. Maybe you could buy an HVAC Uncensored t-shirt. They are at the website, HVACUncensored.com. And more merch should be up there soon. I'm just trying to get quality stuff if you guys buy it. And also go to HVAC Tactical and buy one of their many, many shirts. All right? I love you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next week, I'll talk at you mofos later. All right? Peace. Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored Podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests. Sorry, I was going to take it too far. I think one of my balls almost popped out. Good night.